Hey everyone, welcome back to RetroTech. Today I want to talk about CRTs again, and specifically the high pitch squealing whining noise that comes out of them when they're powered on. Today I want to look at what causes this issue in CRTs, and what can we do to maybe limit the noise, or help make it not as ear piercing and migraine inducing as it can be. No matter what type of CRT you use, whether it's a consumer grade CRT or it happens to be a CRT monitor and even the higher end monitors, all of them are going to have the same problem with high frequency noises that can affect people in a negative way. For today, we're going to be looking at a Sony PVM and we're going to take a closer look at what's causing the high frequency noise on this monitor. That is this flyback transformer down here on the main chassis. While our CRT is powered on, the flyback transformer will generate a high frequency and high voltage signal that is required to give us a display picture. However, this high frequency tone is within the upper range of human hearing. The high voltage signal that is generated from the flyback is called a sawtooth signal, which in turn creates vibration and internal changing within the flyback that adds noise. Now the majority of the noise we're hearing is coming out of this flyback transformer. And over time as this degrades, that sound can become louder and more prevalent as you're using it. However, there are other transformers in this monitor and in most CRTs that can contribute to additional high frequency noises. In the bottom left hand corner we see a second transformer on our main chassis. And then there are three additional transformers that are located on our G power board over here. This is just a quick look at some of those transformers. Here's the two smaller transformers on our power board and then we've got a larger transformer. This transformer converts power on our power board. It also can add additional high frequency tone noise to our noise that's coming from our flyback transformer already. After 20 plus years of use you can see how some of these parts will eventually start to wear down and make a higher noise due to the vibration internally. There are basically two options that don't involve changing components and today I will be doing both of them. This repair will require me to take apart my monitor again. I need to get my main chassis and I will also need to remove my power board so that I can reflow the solder on all the transformers. I will be using my Hakko soldering iron as well as rosin core solder. Please note I am increasing my temperature slightly for this reflow and the reflow simply is me going down and locating the pins for each leg of the transformer and then heating that point up and adding fresh solder. After I've completely reflowed all five transformers, I went ahead and reassembled the PVM and now I'm ready to test it. So let's power it up! We need a test pattern, so we're going to get into our 240p test suite. And the first test I want to show you is the white, red, green, blue, black screen. All right, I've got this white screen pulled up and I hope you can notice on the microphone catching the high pitch frequency noise. Now this is intensified on this white screen. If I go off the white screen, the volume comes down. So the white screen is great for testing and seeing if you have a high frequency issue. That sound is just atrocious. So our first step to correct this is going to be a screen adjustment. And most of the time this is on the back of the flyback, but thankfully we have a breakout to the back of our neck board where we can use a screwdriver and make this adjustment. I need to adjust this so that it's not too bright and it's not too dark. If I turn the screen too bright, I also get a higher high pitched squeal coming from the flyback. Now after your flyback is set, you'll want to go in and make sure that your knobs on the front are kind of in that middle position for 
brightness and contrast so you can get a good overall screen while it's just in the standard mode. There's also a setting in the sub menu to control sub brightness and sub contrast which need to be tuned down into a reasonable range so that you're not putting out too much contrast or too much brightness on your screen. Now this last part is simply going into the sub menu and changing sub contrast and sub brightness to a reasonable level and always remember to hit degauss twice to make sure you write any changes to your monitor. So you're never going to get rid of all the noise that's going to come out of a CRT. It's just part of the technology that makes this display work. But you don't want any extra noise that can, again, give you a migraine headache or really make the CRT process unenjoyable. In closing, please remember to take every safety precaution when working on CRTs. I will link to a video now that has all the information you need to work on or start working on CRTs safely. I'm Steve. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think with a comment below and have a wonderful day.